Okay, so the last lecture we have discussed the line integral of a function of complex variable z and integral c f z dz, which we have defined as continued line integral uh, that if a curve c is a curve whose parametric equation is given as x t plus i times y t, where t ranges from a to b and c is a smooth piecewise curve and function f which is defined at continuous defined at each point on the curve c then integral c f z d z this is the limit of the sum sigma f of x i k into delta z k k is 1 to n and the maximum of this mod delta z k goes to 0. So, if this limit exists we denote this by in, uh, integral f z z and when c is a closed contour then we use the notation circle for a closed curve for closed curve we use this integral c f z d z as this ok. And then we have uh, taken up one example uh, that to evaluate this integral real part of z square dz along the path c from the point 0 z not 0 to the point z which is a 1 plus a 2 plus 4 i where c is c is in three ways is defined one is the line integral the line segment c is the line segment joining the points z naught to z and in that case we have seen the value uh, has come out to be the value was integral the value of this integral uh, we have computed because it is a curve this is line and here is 0 this is the point z 2 plus 4 i. So, basically this line becomes y is equal to 2 x the line is y is 2 x and then x will vary from 0 to 2 and, and after computing the integral uh, parameter, uh, we have seen the value of this integral was coming to be minus 8 1 plus 2 i. In the second case, so this I am there because we have done it already ok. Second case we will see is the uh, x axis c is a x axis from 0 to the point 2 and then and then then vertically to the point 2 plus 4 i that is this is our point 0 here is 2 this is the path here this is 2 plus 4 i. So, we are going along with this along this. So, basically c here c is c 1 union c 2 2 curves are there we are the parametric parametric equations of c 1 and c 2 are as follows c 1 you can write it the equation because in along the path c 1 what happens the x equal to t by 0. So, z 1 t which I am writing for c 1 as t i a t plus i times of 0 where t varies from 0 to 2 ok. And then if you substitute all these things the value of the integrals uh, that also we have taken the value of integrals along this path was coming to be 8 cube 
y3 8y3 8y3 this was the value along c1 then c2 c2 is the path vertically this so x coordinate is 2 so z2 t is 2 plus y is varying so 2 plus i t i t where the t ranges from 0 to 4 okay so what happens in the uh, integral when you go for the integral uh, real part of z square dz by dt dt so here z is uh, this equation d to z so dz2 we will write along this path so we get real part of x uh, z square x square minus y square x is t x square minus y square dz2 y dt dt and then t varies from 0 to 4. So, that will come out to be 0 to 4 x is 2. So, 4 minus t square dz y dt dz2 y dt is this is 0 this is 1 only that is i only so it is i dt i dt so it will come out to be this i dt and when you compute this value for this uh, the value will come out to be minus 163 by 3 i so c1 along the value is coming this c2 along therefore along the second path along second the value of the integral the value of integral is c1 union c2 that is 8y3 minus 16 y3 i earlier the value was something different it was minus 8 1 plus 2 i and here is it. and in third case also when you take the path the path is a curve parabola uh, the path if you remember this was the parabola c is the parabola y is equal to x square uh, joining these two point joining z naught to z so in this case the parametric equation of the curve c will be x t if i take t x s t then y becomes t square so i t square and t varies from uh, because it will go from 0 to uh, the point 2 is it not 0 to 2 so it is 0 to 2 and then find out the dz by dt and other so if we take the dz by dt this comes out to be 1 plus 2 i t dt and then real part of z square is x square minus y square x is t by is t square so minus t4 this is and therefore the integral of this along the path c real part of z square dz is equal to integral t square minus t4 1 plus 2 i t dt and t varies from 0 to 2 0 to 2 so if i compute this value the value will come out to be minus 56 by 15 minus 40 by 3 i. So, what we conclude is that this is our two points z naught and z is 2 plus 4 i. We want the integral of this function real part of z square dz along the path c where the c varies in the first case it is a straight line joining these two point this is the first path in the second path we are going along this and this this is the second path and third path will be like this a parabola so in in all the three cases what we are seeing the values are different they are not coming to be the same it means the line integral of the function f though it is continuous function will exist but it depends on the path of integration so the important result is the line integral d 
depends on the path of integration. That's so our aim is to because uh, once it depends on the path of integration, then the problem is there because we cannot take this value or that value as a uh, subsequent uh, work because it depends on the path of integration. So, we have to identify certain condition on the function so that when we get the integral, the integral should be independent of the path, it should not depend on the path. So, once you have that, uh, that type of the function, all the condition on the function so that it is independent of path, then this value will be taken up for our subsequent work and that is the one. And in this consequence, the Cauchy integral theorem plays the vital role. In fact, that is the key point from where you can justify that the independent integral will be independent of path provided certain conditions on the functions are satisfied. Okay? So, let us see. <laughs> now, prior to the Cauchy theorem, let little bit uh, just one um, more concept about the ML inequality. And that ML inequality say what is this ML inequality? If f is integrable on a curve C, let C be a piece by C smooth curve. A smooth curve whose equation is say suppose z t is x t plus i y t, t varies from a to b is given whose equation is this given okay? and let f be a and let f be a uh, integrable function on C. Integrable means it is continuous basically. So, once you take it continuous, T will give the guarantee that it is an integrable function. However, there are some functions also which are even not continuous, but it can be integrable. So, let it be integrable functions on it. And let us suppose, let the length of the curve curve C B L B L okay B L let uh, length of the curve B L and function f is such which is bounded by M bounded function for on C that is at each point the function is well defined but the value of the function does not exceed by some constant say m on c. Then this ML inequality says that modulus of the integral f z d z over the curve c is less than equal to m times l and this is known as the ML inequality. Okay? So, proof I am just deleting because the proof based on the definition of the line integral f z. When function f is integrable, then we can write it this in the form of the uh, uh, this uh, uh, this way in the form of this series. And then when you take the mod of this, basically mod of this is less than equal to this, which is less than this m and get the real. mod of dz is nothing but l. So, <laughs> this is very, now If you the arc length of the curve C, arc length of the curve C is given by this formula, which is also used, will be used mod dz over the curve C. So, these two things uh, will be needed in futures whenever we go for. Okay. Now, let us come. We have discussed the domain. Domain is an open connected set. 
Now, for the Cauchy integral theorem, when we consider the function a which is analytic in a domain, we do not simply take the domain, we do not simply take the domain, what we do we require something more and that we has a concept of simply connected domains which is required for them. So, first is domain is an open connected set. Is it not? In the complex plane, this is a domain. Then simply connected domain We define the simply connected domain, <coughs> a domain, <coughs> a domain in which any simple closed curve, any simple closed curve, a domain in which any simple closed curve can be shrink can be shrinked to a point without leaving the domain So, what is the meaning of this? Suppose this is a domain D. We say this domain is a simply connected domain. If we picked up any closed curve C, any simple closed curve C and try to excuse it and if it slings to a point, single point to a point without leaving the domain means no, no uh, times these uh, while shrinking the points are outside of the domain, so then such a domain is said to be a simply connected domain. For example, our circle mod z less than 1, this is a simply connected domain, is it not? Simply connected, half ran, real part of z is greater than 0, real part of z is greater than means x, this is the plane x is uh, real part sorry I am sorry this is the imaginary part of z is a so this is imaginary part of z is greater than 0 because this is a positive part and real part of z is this one this is the real part of z ok. So, in this real part of z if I bring it any closed curve then it can be shrink to a point without leaving the domain. However, if we picked up the domain like this, suppose I take mod z 1 is less than mod z less than 2, then this domain is basically an analysis centered at 0 between the two circular disk uh, circle between mod z less than uh, mod z 1 and mod z 2. So, if this portion is an analysis. Now, in this analysis, B, if we take a closed curve, then always you cannot get the condition to be satisfied. That is, we cannot always shrink to a single point without leaving the domain. For example, if I take this domain, uh, in this domain, if I take this circle, and then try to shrink it to a point, then as soon as it comes to this boundary, up to here there is no problem, but as soon as it crosses the boundary, these points are not available in the domain because this is the only domain. So, it cannot be shrinked to a single point. However, if we take this curve, it can be shrinked to a single point. So, it does not mean that domain is a simply connected domain, what the condition is any simply closed curve, the condition is any simple closed curve can be shrinked to a point without leaving the domain. So, that is why this is not a 
simply connected is not a simply connected domain. Similarly, a domain of this type, if I leave these two holes and only this portion are taken, then this is also not a simply connected domain, not simply connected domain. So, such a domain which are not simply connected domain are said to be a multiple connected domains. Okay? And then the domain which has a two boundaries be defined as a doubly connected which has a three boundary which can has a triply connected domain and sign. So, in general we define a domain uh, as a P fold connected domain. P fold connected domains. P fold connected domain, a bounded domain D a bounded domain D, a bounded domain D is said to be P fold connected domain if if its boundary if its boundary uh, consist of p close connected set connected sets p close connected set without common point common point okay say for example in this way, this portion i am not taking this is out so, this is not a simply connected, but if I join this thing like this, then once you start the moving from here going towards this and then coming here, finally it comes here and like this. Now, this becomes a simply connected domain. Similarly, when you go from here up to here and then come back from this going this and coming like this way and again this side. So, this will be again the, it means this domain D is divided into two sub domains D 1 D 2 which are simply connected domains. So, it will be a doubly connected domain this is the doubly connected domains. Now, here you remember there is a one hole in the so, if a domain has a single hole, it is a doubly connected. If it is two holes, it will be a triply connected. For example, this suppose we have these three holes, then again we can draw like this. Suppose we get this one, okay, and then like this. So, we can get this figure, okay. We can go through this way and then uh, three domains we are, yes, one, two, three. So, three we are getting this domain which is simply and two uh, holes. So, this will be a double triply connected domain. domain okay? So, that is very uh, important for this. Okay? Now, come to our uh, main result which is the Cauchy theorem. Now, Cauchy Cauchy's integral theorem. The Cauchy integral theorem says if Fz is analytic, if Fz is an analytic function. in a simply connected domain in a simply connected domain d 
and and the derivative f prime z is continuous and the derivative f prime z is continuous in the domain d in this domain d then for every simple simple piece wise A smooth closed curve C contained in D contained in D then for every simple piecewise smooth closed curve contained in D the value of the integral the value of the integral c f z d z will be 0. So, what this shows? This shows that if a function is analytic in a simply connected domain d means function must be analytic as domain should be simply connected domain and this is an extra condition here choosing Cauchy, but without even this conditions one can prove that the proof is given by the Gorsuch and then even this condition can be dropped. The reason is means the function is analytic as I told earlier also then all of its derivatives will exist. So, all derivative exists means automatically the derivative f prime z will becomes continuous. So, basically this uh, condition a need not be required in proof, but that proof itself is very wrong. So, Cauchy did it, Cauchy used this restriction and then proved it with the help of the Green's theorem. So, what this says is suppose f be a analytic function in a domain d and derivative is continuous, then if I pick up any closed curve c which is simple piece by each closed curve totally contained inside c and it is uh, point also function is analytic at each point as well as inside c also continuous, then the value of this integral will be 0. Okay. The proof of this based on the Green's theorem. So, before going the proof, what is the Green's theorem is? Uh, Let us see first the Green's theorem because that will be required in proving this result. Green's theorem said let f and d let p and q p which is a function of x y and q which is also a function of x y be any continuously differentiable function any two continuously differentiable functions means p and q both are continuous they are differentiable partial derivative with respect to x and y of p and q exist continuously differentiable function inside a region r inside the region r whose boundary whose boundary c gamma is a closed gamma is a closed curve then this theorem says the value of this line integral of the function p dx plus q dy this is equal to the double integral of the function del q over del x minus del p over del y dx dy over the region r. So, this is our region r r is this region, boundary is this c is a closed contour covering the r 
function p and q both are continuous possess a continuous partial derivative at each point on this domain d then the line integral can be transferred into a double integral with the help of the Green's theorem. So, we will make use of this result in establishing or improving our Cauchy theorem. Let us see. So, proof of the Cauchy theorem. Proof of Cauchy integral theorem. Let us suppose f z is u plus i v, u plus i v, where u is a function of x y, v is also a function of x y and f is given to be analytic and continuous. So, u and v both are analytic and continuous. Consider integral f of z d z. Now, when you substitute f z is u plus i v and d z equal to dx and dy, then it can be break up into two parts as we have seen in case of line integral u dx minus b dy plus eta times integral v dx plus u dy. Okay? Now, apply Green's theorem because function is analytic derivative is continuous. So, u and v both are continuous functions possess a continuous partial derivatives and c is a closed curve. So, the region this is your c this will be the region r. So, if we apply the uh, uh, theorem Green's theorem then this can be written as the double integral over the r double integral over r uh, del q uh, that is equal to uh, p d x plus q divide. So, uh, the integral is a del q over del x. So, minus del v over del x then minus times del p over del y del q over del x minus del p over del y okay, d x d y then plus i times double integral r here also this is del q over del so del u over del x minus del v over del y dx dy okay now since the function fz is analytic so its real and imaginary parts its real and imaginary part will satisfy CR's equation. equation. So, u and v are the real. So, by CR's equation del u over del x is del v over del y. Del u over del x is del v over del y. So, second part vanishes that is del u over del x is del v over del y and del u over del y is minus del v over del x. So, first vanishes. So, this implies that integral c f z d z is 0 and that is proven. Okay? Now, Cauchy has proved this by using, but the Cauchy Gorset has dropped the idea of uh, uh, that uh, continuity and then also he has proved the thing. So, we are not interested in that, we just go. Okay? That is the proof. Now, let us see a few uh, example which will show the direct application of the Cauchy integral theorem, but somewhere we also see it does not contradict the Cauchy integral theorem though the integral is coming to be 0. Let us see the example. Suppose I want the integral of the function sec z dz over the curve say c which is mod z equal to 1. Okay. Now, what is sec z? Sec z is 1 by cosine z. So, cosine z becomes 0 if z is uh, the point plus minus pi by 2, is it not? Plus minus 3 pi by 2, these are the point where it becomes 0. So, function is not well defined at this point, 
But if we look the circle centered at 0 with a radius 1, then all these points lies outside. Here somewhere they are lying. Is it not? So, function sec z is totally analytic inside as well as on the boundary of this c. So, this value this is 0 because sec z is analytic inside and on on mod z equal to 1. No singularity. So, by Cauchy integral theorem the value will be 0. Similarly, if we take the integral e to the power z mod z equal to 1 it is 0 and like the any analytic function if you picked up the directly value will come out to be 0. Then let us see some suppose I take the integral dz by z square we wanted to evaluate it along the circle mod z equal to 1. Okay. So, write down the parametric equation of the curve. to the circle c is z t equal to e to the power i t cos t plus i times sin t mod z is 1 okay? and t varies from 0 to 2 pi one side open other okay? 0 to 2 pi and that is ok. So, if we substitute it then d z becomes i e to the power i t d t and then twice i t 0 to 2 pi and if I compute the value of this the value will come out to be e to the power minus i t by minus i 0 to 2 pi. Now, e to the power i 2 pi cos 2 pi plus i times i so it is 1 and minus this 0 so basically the value will come out to be 0. So, value of this integral along this closed path is 0. This is the circle c centered at 0 with radius 1. The function the value of this integral is coming to 0, but what is the function? Function f z square has singularity or not defined we can say because we have not uh, introduced the concept of singularity not defined at z equal to 0. So, function ceases to be analytic there it means the function is not analytic in spite of this the value of this integral is coming to 0. Does it contradict the Cauchy theorem? No, it will not contradict the Cauchy theorem, but the Cauchy theorem says if the function is analytic then the value of the integral along any closed path must be 0, but it does not say the other way around that if the integral of the function is 0 then whether the function is analytic that does not the conclusion this does not the meaning of the Cauchy theorem. That is Cauchy theorem is only one base to that if the function is analytic then the integral of the function uh, along any closed path in a simple domain will be 0. That is uh, the analyticity is the sufficient condition, but not the necessary condition. So, this shows so, this example shows shows that this example shows that the uh, f is a analytic server other than this that the analyticity of the function f z in a simply in a domain D is sufficient condition condition is a sufficient condition for for integral f z d z along the close path c to be 0, but not necessary. this is the one. Now, let us take the example another example. <coughs> Suppose I take the curve integral evolute this integral d z 
by z along the path mod z equal to say mod z less than half uh, counter curve yeah, yeah, less than half and less than 3 by 2. Let us take this that is we are taking an inverse centered at 0 with a radius half and 3 by 2. So, this is the portion c is a curve c is any closed curve we are choosing any closed curve this is our closed curve c this is c analysis boundary ok this is the domain and c is this boundary lies in this c lies no no c we are c is a closed curve lying lying in the analysis analysis in this channel. so uh, unit circle lies in the analysis in now what is the value of this let us see so let z is equal to e to the power i t and sorry r e to the power i t because you take the uh, any r e to the power i t then what will be this d z becomes r e to the power i t into i. So, integral t varies from 0 to 2 pi because entire circle and then this becomes d z means i r e to the power i t z is r e to the power i t and d t is it not and then t is 0 to 2 pi. So, what you are getting is this is coming 2 pi i is it not and here the function f z which is 1 by z is analytic inside the analysis 1 is less than this less than 3 by 2 half less than mod z less than 3. So, function is analytic in the domain this is our domain where the function is analytic but and c is also closed and c is also closed curve closed curve still the value of this integral is not equal to 0. So, again it does not contradict the Cauchy theorem because we cannot conclude from the Cauchy theorem the reason is all the conditions of the Cauchy theorems are not satisfied. What the condition of the Cauchy theorem is the function must be annihilating in a dom simply connected domain, but d this domain is not simply connected this inside the domain d. So, is not uh, so here d is not simply connected domain that is why we cannot say the country. So, what we so in the Cauchy theorem what uh, remark we can say that the condition of the simply connected domain the condition the condition of simply connected domain d is quite essential quite essential in while applying while applying Cauchy theorem Cauchy integral theorem. So, that is must in that ok. Uh, let us one more example let us see uh, suppose I take the integral of this curves z bar d z. Now, this closed curve c uh, is a circle mod z equal to 1. This center 0 radius 1 c is a closed curve. Now, if I compute the value of this integral the value will come out to be t range from 0 to 2 pi and that z wall is minus i t d z is e i t d t 0 to 2 pi. So, the value will come out to be 2 pi and d t is i 2 pi i. So, value will come out to be 2 pi. Now, here again the curve is closed, but the value is not coming to be 0. The reason is 
the region is or region is that the function f z which is z wall is not analytic is not analytic in in the in any in the complex plane c in fact this we have already seen that this function is only differentiable at 0 and nowhere else. So, it is not analytic throughout the domain. Therefore, whatever the closed curve we choose, the function is not analytic at all. Therefore, so this will, okay. So, we get this, uh, this so other thing. Now, okay, let us come to the slightly, uh, B, uh, as we have told earlier that uh, line integral since it depends on the path of integration. So, there is no use unless we are sure that the line integral, the computation of the line integral is independent of the path. So, for this uh, the Cauchy theorem helps. So, what is the result is independent of path. Uh, what this says is let f z be analytic analytic in a simply connected domain d in a simply connected domain d and let and c be any path any path joining two points z1 and z2 in d, two path joining z1 and z2 in d. Okay. The path c is lies totally in d. Then, then the integral f z d z along the path c along sorry this not curve along the path c c is independent of path this line integral is independent of path of integration and depends only on the end points end points z1 and z2 joining joining the curve end points on the curve so what the meaning is suppose d is a simply connected domain d is a domain and f simply connected domain f is a function which is analytic in this simply at each point in the simply connected domain this is a curve c joining the point z1 to point z2 now this theorem says that if i integrate this function f z dz along the path c then this integral will be independent of path that is if i take another curve say suppose i take this curve c star then the value of the integral along c and the value of the integral along c star will be the same whatever the path is, whether you join this or this whatever may okay so this result can be followed immediately from the Cauchy theorem. Let us take suppose two paths C and C star joining the point Z1 and Z2. So, when we start from Z1, go along the direction of this C up to Z2 and then come back to Z1. So, this will give a closed path. So, we get the closed path will be C union minus C star because the order direction is reversed. 
So, this is the closed pass. So, equal and the function is giving to be analytic throughout this domain. So, it is also analytic inside and continuous on this boundary also. So, integral of this function f z d z along c union minus c star will be 0. <coughs> but this is the same as the integral c f z d z minus integral f z d z c star because this minus or we can write minus here and then minus c star. Then minus of this becomes the minus because the order direction reverse means this will be negative value. Okay, so, we get this and this is coming to be 0. So, integral c f z d z minus integral along c star from here to here f z d z is 0. This implies integral c f z d z and integral c star f z d z both are same, both will get the same value. So, it is independent of the path and that is a one of the interesting result which is a consequence of the Cauchy integral theorem. Another consequence of the integral theorem is the second uh, note. Suppose we have a two point z naught and z and a very zigzag path is giving say okay, just is a simple piece by piece smooth curve is there. We wanted to find the integral of the function along this. Then instead of this, if we bring it to a path which is much simpler, then the value of this integral along this path and this path will be the 0, will be the same and that gives the deformation of the path, that gives an idea of the deformation of path. Means we can deform the path, whatever the path is there, we can try to excuse it to some, means this we can think that c is the deformed path of c star. Slowly we are just reducing as uh, coming down and so that c star and c coincide and always in this process the integral will remain the same. Thank you very much. Thanks. <coughs>